Welcome to Review by DJ Spear C. We have in front of, of the camera today is the SCX10, no, sorry, SCX24. Uh, the 124 scale crawler from Axial. And this is the 1967 Chevrolet C10. It already has the front diff housing in aluminum from hot racing now what I'm going to do is the back one it's still in plastic and I'm not sure if she's going to want to focus here but it is the hot racing X S X T F 1301 rear aluminum case for Axel SCX 24 I already removed the physical tires off of it. These are the RC four wheel drives. And for a little bit at ease, I did remove the body itself. You will need a 0 0.050. Basically, what I'm going to do is uh, remove the lower shocks, remove the top links and the bottom link and the drive shaft and remove the complete uh, assembly in one shot. That way I don't need to start dismantling half of the vehicle. The bolt will stay on the shock itself. That's one of the things I try to do is Dismantle the vehicle as less as possible that I need to. As I see and I saw a lot of people sometime trying to repair the vehicles and yeah, they dismantle half of the vehicle when you physically don't need to. Now these screws here, it's okay if you mix them. They are all the same length. They're just sometimes it's a little bit hard to remove for some reason. There you go, put this away. Now we have a, a rear dry, uh, drive assembly. And what I'm going to do is try to zoom in a little bit better for you guys to be able to see it. I will remove this part, the dry shaft. If I can. side we're going to remove the X's and make sure not to lose your drive pins they are tiny and you cannot buy them by themselves you have to physically buy the complete assembly I don't know why that's what they did and now I'm going to remove the diff cover. If I don't drop my screwdriver, they're tiny screws, believe me. Normally I would use a physical drill, but they're so easy to strip. And they're tiny. Now, this is not my vehicle, is uh, one of my friends. Me personally, the diff case in uh, aluminum 
and this kind of vehicle I wouldn't bother with it but they are nice looking that's for sure one more left for the diff cover Remove this guy. We're gonna put the screws with the diff cover. Because now there is a bearing in here that we need to remove too. Now I'm just gonna pull straight out the spider gear or the worm gear they call it. Now we have your main diff. Now there's two more screws on each end of these guys to, to be able to remove the axle itself. Because if you try to remove the axle right now, it's locked in there. Basically, these screws just locks in the bearing. Now, before I pull the axle, I'll do both sides. Almost done. Now, there is a lot of upgrades uh, for the SCX24, and there's some coming on mine. Okay, now I pull the both axle. I'm just going to keep them separate. I think they're the same length. I'm going to grab something to hold this guy and Pull it out. I'm going to use my screwdriver to remove this bearing. Now, there is a bearing for the pinion itself. Usually what I do, I go where the pin comes out. And I go in a slight angle. And you're able to pop it out. And now your diff case is empty. I'm gonna go to the diff case cover and gonna do the same thing too, but sometimes you might you might need something like pointy. There we go. I was able to take it off with my screwdriver. I would suggest to use something pointy because it is hard on your tip. Uh, let's open this guy here. We have a case. We have a cover. And they do give you some screws. Now, my buddy here wants me to use the black screws. Meaning we're going to reuse these screws here. No, I'm going to pop that bearing back in the case itself there she goes and open this one here I'd rather do those bearings now before I forget Because it is easy to forget. Now I'm going to pop this one in. This hole. That one in the hole. And I'm going to put the gear in the middle now. Sorry about that. Like I was saying, I put the uh, ring gear back, back in. Now basically what I'm going to do is insert the drive shafts. Now, hold the middle one until you find the sweet spot to insert this guy in. <laughs> and this seems to be a little bit more tricky than I thought. 
going to lift it because I might be too deep. There we go. Yep. Basically, what you need to do is grab this guy here, lift it a bit, insert your gear, put your, your, your shaft. Yeah, this one went in super nice. Again, he wants me to reuse the original screws itself. Now, all these steps here are basically the same step you just did, just completely in reverse. And then you just reinsert it in the physical truck itself. I'm just gonna put these guys here, then I'll put the case and I may not show you guys how to put it back in the physical vehicle again. You just did these steps. Okay, man. It's tiny. But I know I did say earlier I wouldn't put them aluminum on my personal rig. Seeing it and they they are nice. I'm not gonna lie here. They are very, very nice. Now I'm gonna reinsert the worm gear with the case itself. I turn it to make sure everything's fine. Yep. Now I did put the diff case screws aside here. Now I'm not going to rush it. I don't want to scratch it. Aha, see, I didn't even notice. I forgot to transfer a piece. On top of your diff case, there is a, a plastic piece. You will take, need to transfer to the new unit. I'm wondering that was weird. Nothing to screw in. You see it here. That just removes itself. Pop it back in here. And then You'll be able to screw it back in. There we go. Now I just noticed something. On the diff case, the top screws, one set is longer than the, than the other one. I put this wrong one right here. I don't know if you can see it on my mat here. There is a difference in length. The longer ones goes on top and the shorter one goes on the bottom. Sorry about that. I did not notice that. Put 
this one here. There we go. This is turning perfect, both sides. Now if I grab the worm gear, it is turning. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the dry shaft back. It's gonna be easier to me to be able to turn these gears, making sure there's no binding. No, there's no binding, no nothing. And when you do this, just look where your axle pinch would go, and you'll see it when you're turning it. They're both turning. Now let's put our pins back in. The tiny, tiny pins. Put them halfway. Insert your X's. I do recommend, the other thing you could do, I do sometimes do, when I know I'm gonna work on small parts, I grab kind of a white towel. Now use a one that if you get grease on it, doesn't matter. Or ask your parents or your wife, your girlfriend to make sure. If you do drop a screw on it, a lot easier to refine. Now I'm just gonna move these guys up here. Reinsert the dry shafts. Gonna realign one. There is a better way to do this. Uh, no, this guy goes here. I'm just gonna leave the screw in there. Grab the short one. Turn it around. Grab a short one again. Screw this back in. I knew I do apologize. This is taking a little bit longer video than I would love to. And now I did a boo-boo. <laughs> Not sure if you can see it. It is all blackness here. But what I did, I mixed up my links. This is supposed to go underneath. And I left it on top here. Just make sure to leave these down, bring these up. Uh, now, unfortunately, there's no... easy way you have to physically unscrew these guys here. Bring this down, re-screw it back in. Did I, I'm wondering here.
might have mixed my links up. I'm wondering. One of the th things I could say here to do is take pictures. Because I think I just did mix up my links. Keep these two here. Normally, that's something I do check. But this time, I did not. Oops. Make sure your link is inserted before inserting your screw. Come on, no, 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 no. This is uh, fun. There we go. Now, don't do like me. The short links go where the shocks go and the long links go on the top of the diff case oh cool for a shot Now I'll grab my other screw here. Now before I continue, I just realized my dry shaft popped out. While my lower links are not on, I can still put it back in. If you do forget about your dry shaft, dry shaft coming out, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Now this video is getting a little bit too long here. Uh, basically put your shocks back in, put your wheels back in, attach all your links and you'll have your aluminum dry shaft on your vehicle if you have any questions or comment post them below i'll be gladly to answer you guys uh, and if you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching